if you add the numbers together, it's four plus five is nine, and four plus seven is 11. So I think this is Donald Trump's 9-11 on his enemies. What do you mean by that? An excellent question. What could this MAGA artist possibly mean by saying that the upcoming election will be, quote, Trump's 9-11 on his enemies? Well, if you add four plus five, it equals nine. And if you add four plus seven, that's it equals 11. 11. And then you get another 9-11, except it's their 9-11, the deep state. Well, that didn't clear it up at all. But as we've covered numerous times before, the conspiratorial mindset leaks into every aspect of someone's life once they fully abandon their critical thinking skills. They see signals and signs everywhere and in everything. But let's hear what the rest of this guy has to say. Do you think that Trump planned to be the 45th and then the 47th president to provide that it, clue? I don't know if it, uh, you know, uh, in politics, nothing happens by chance. And there you have it. It only took the slightest bit of critical thinking in a simple question completely collapse his bonkers theory. Now, it's not often that we hear MAGA use the 9-11 tragedy in such a way, but it does make me wonder if the artist is familiar with this notorious Trump clip. Well, nobody's gotten to the bottom of 9-11, unfortunately, and they should have, as to the maniacs that did that horrible thing to our city, to our country, to the world. So nobody's really been there. I've known these people for a long time in Saudi Arabia, and they've been friends of mine for a long time. Uh, they've invested in many American companies. They own big percentages of many, many American companies. And uh, frankly, what they're doing for golf is so great. What they're doing for the players is so great. The salaries are going to go way up. It's absolutely ridiculous that Trump would say this at his golf course in New Jersey, promoting the Live Golf Tour, which is owned and operated by the Saudi Arabian government slash royal family. Because if you know anything about the Saudi Arabian government, 9-11 victims have brought a lawsuit against their government for the alleged involvement and support for the 9-11 attacks. And what's interesting here about Trump is that his words really don't align with what we expect out of someone representing the party who loves patriotism, who loves nationalism, and the concept of America being a global superpower. And unfortunately, well, this is far from the first time we've run into someone who appears to legitimately believe in the pseudoscience that is numerology. How would you define wokeism? Wokeism. Oh. Let, me, let, me, let me start oh, here. Yeah, I'll get I, I'm not good at defining woke. Okay. Let him do that, but yeah. Woke is de uh, accepting everything that is evil. Uh, so, for instance, monster cans. Each line represents a six. So you got six, six, six. And then if you look on the monster can itself, uh, in the O of the monster, it has a cross and it's got, uh, uh, it set represents the Antichrist. So when you drink it, you've got the cross coming down. And that's... Uh, so that's wokeism yes, sort of in a yes, nutshell. Yes, in, in a nutshell, it's accepting everything that's evil as good. That is legitimately one of the dumbest conspiracy theories I've ever heard. There are some conspiracy theories where, yes, you can understand how a person arrived at a certain point, even if you don't agree with them, but the logic isn't far off. This one, saying woke, is about accepting all things that are evil and a monster energy drink, the branding that is meant to be eye-catching and drive sales is linked to evil because of the lines on the drink and that you're bringing up religion and wokeness. How? These are the people that we're dealing with. These are the people, y'all, that are voting for Donald Trump. They... The brain cells are not on. And if they, are, if they are on, they're not functioning very well. A monster energy drink is about evil because of the lines. And they represent the Antichrist. What are we doing here? What kind of indoctrination? I just, I'm asking you just for specific. Uh, I like to graduate high school in Stevens Point. I mean, I have it on my phone. It's It's talking about gender issues and issues that shouldn't even be discussed in school and pushing young children. If it were up to my granddaughter, she would be a dog and they would be letting her crawl around on the floor 
and identify as a dog. Until two weeks from now, then she'd be a cat. And they're letting children transition or telling them to keep it from their parents and pushing them to get gender reaffirming care and keep it a secret from their parents. That's not school. And that's happening at school? There are cases uh, specifically? Uh, all over the United States. And we are fighting school boards left and right. Uh, wokeism, that's horrible. I mean, I, it, it's borderline mental issues, I guess I, I would say. I mean, if you don't know what you are and you can't see what's going on right now in front of our eyes, it's uh, something's definitely wrong with, with those individuals. What, what, is, what is it about wokeism that upsets a lot of the people that would be on these panels today? Well, like you just mentioned, it's the ever-changing thing of it. I mean, you're constantly walking on eggshells and you have no idea of what I say today is going to be acceptable in four years. I don't think it's okay to be ridiculing and getting upset at people for something they said eight, ten years ago. And that's kind of the whole idea of cancel culture and the wokeness that it's been right now is we're getting people in trouble for things that happened before these things were even wrong to do. So I don't know. I don't agree with that. That's how, what gets how, people. How would you uh, define woke? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> To me, woke is going out of your way to please everybody around you um, and to accept any ideology that they feel is comfortable for them. And so I don't think that that's how we're supposed to live our lives. I think you should let people do what they want to do, but I shouldn't be forced to, to have to accept those things and we should all be able to just live how we want to live. That's what I feel woke is. The amount of ignorance in those clips, just astounding, downright remarkable in the worst way possible, but not in the least bit shocking, okay? What woke actually means is being culturally and socially aware of different issues going on in our country, being conscious, right, of racism, sexism, gender equality issues, homophobia, transphobia, all these things, right, related to the LGBTQ plus community. That's what woke means, and it was created by black people, but unfortunately, it has been hijacked from the black community. What a shocker, as so many things have been in our history, by people on the right to use it as a weapon against anybody who doesn't agree with a very specific and narrow set of far right pol political and social views. And the other thing is the inherent bigotry associated, being, associated with being anti-woke is largely due to a lack of proper knowledge and pure ignorance about issues like gender, sexuality, racism, DEI, and more. Again, the education system is failing us. That's why you see so many people spewing out all of this bull BS, okay? And, and, if, and that has, if that isn't the case, then it has to do with their hatred, their dislike for people who look like me, for people who love the same sex that they are, for people who are women, right, in certain cases, all of that. The moral of the story is those people are dangerous, putting that information out there. And that's why we continue to push back and give you the truth, the real information on what's going on in America and how people should be fighting to end racism and to be and fighting to be, you know, politically aware, socially conscious. That's all. For LHQ, I'm Chris Williamson. We'll see you next time.